In this video, we're gonna be building the static homepage for this tech blog. So I'm gonna go ahead and click edit page. And we have a couple of settings that we need to configure before we can start actually designing the page. So we'll go to page settings. And the first thing we need to do is disable the page title because we don't want it to say home up at the top above our actual page content. So we'll disable that. The next thing we need to do is set the page layout to full width. And then once that's done, we're gonna set the content style to unboxed. So now that I've changed those three settings, I am ready to start designing this page. So I have a rough vision for this page in terms of what it's gonna look like and the type of content we're gonna have. I'm gonna start with a large hero section at the top that showcases a few of the latest posts because this is a very content focused website. It's a blog, right? So we wanna showcase the content front and center. Below that, we're gonna have another section where we list a few more posts sequentially. And then we're gonna have a section where we ask people to sign up for the newsletter. And finally, at the bottom, we're gonna promote our premium offering, Tech Blog Plus. So with all of that in mind, let's go ahead and get started. So I'm gonna start with a row layout. And we're gonna select the single column layout. And right away, I'm gonna go ahead and apply some styles to this row layout. So for the background, I'm gonna borrow the gradient scheme that we used for the uh, newsletter subscription widget we created earlier. So I'm gonna go to background overlay settings. I'm gonna go to gradient. And for our first color, I'm gonna use this dark purple color. And for the second color, I'm gonna use the first accent color. Then we need to set the overlay opacity to 100%. And this background is gonna be the basis for our big hero section. Now within the hero section, I'm gonna add another row layout. This row layout is gonna have two columns, an equal 50-50 split. And here we're gonna add a posts block to the left side. And this posts block is going to have one post. So number of items is gonna be one. And then I also wanna go down to the layout settings and set the number of columns to one. So we're good there. Now I wanna align the image to the top instead of to the left. And I'm gonna remove the categories and all of the metadata. So we just have a title, an excerpt, and a read more link. On the right side, I'm gonna add another posts block. Here we're gonna do four items, and we're gonna set the offset starting post to one. And the reason I'm doing that is because we've already listed a post here so for this block, we wanna start with post number two. That way we're not showing the same post in both blocks. So once that's set, I'm gonna go down to layout and set the columns to two. Now in this block, I'm also gonna disable the categories. I'm gonna set the title size to probably H5 and then we're also going to disable the metadata and the excerpt. So this is roughly what this section is gonna look like, but it is pretty wide. So to fix that, I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna use the list view to go back to this top level row layout. And I'm gonna to go to the structure settings and turn on this setting that says content max width inherit from theme. That's gonna limit the width of all of this content to the max width from your theme itself. So now if we update this, 
and then view the page on our site. We've got a nice hero section here showcasing some of our latest posts. So going back, click out of everything here. I want to add another row layout. This one's going to be a single column. And I want to set a background color using my color palette. So I'm going to go to background settings, background color. And I think I'm going to use this color. So here I'm going to add another posts block. We're going to keep the number of items at six, but we do need to set the offset starting post. So we've got one, two, three, four, five posts above this section. So we need to set that to five. That just prevents us from having any duplicate posts. So in this section, I'm going to keep a little more metadata visible and I think I'm just going to change the category option to pill and I'm fine to leave all of this metadata here. The author, the date, the excerpt, all of that stuff. I might actually do what I did on the blog page and enable the author image and remove the by label. So it's not showing up in the preview here, but I think if we view this on the front end of the site, we will be able to see the avatars. Yep, that looks good. And we do need to limit the max width of this section as well, just like we did up here. So if we go to this second row layout, go back to the structure settings, and enable content max width, inherit from theme, Once again, a much more reasonable width. Now, I think I do want to reduce the size of these titles a little bit. So we'll click into this block and we can go to title size. Let's reduce it to H3. So we'll update, go back to the page and that looks pretty good. Actually though, the categories to me are making this feel a little bit cluttered. So I think I'm gonna remove the categories from that section. Just see how that looks. Yeah, I definitely prefer that. Now let me see if I wanna add the author to the posts at the top as well. Now I'm the only author on this site, but if you use your imagination, a large tech blog like this would have multiple authors, so it could be a useful piece of information. So we'll go to this posts block and enable meta info. And we'll just, we'll keep all of it for now. We'll get rid of the author label, but enable the author image. Same thing in this block, go down to the meta settings enable, disable the label, enable the author image. And I just want to see if I like that. So actually, to be honest, this also feels just a little bit cluttered, at least in the smaller posts. So maybe we leave it on the most recent post, but disable it on these posts. So we'll go back Click into here and just disable all the meta info. We'll try it again. That looks good to me. So we've got our first two sections pretty much done. Uh, there is one thing I'm noticing here that these sections could probably use a little bit of padding. So let's go back to the row layout. And we'll go to padding and margin. And let's just increase the top and bottom padding a little bit. So maybe 50 pixels. And we'll just see what that looks like.
That looks good. Gives it a little bit of breathing room. So I'm going to do the same thing for the next section. Padding and margin. 50 and 50. Okay, so on to the next section. We want to encourage people to opt in to our email list, right? So I think what we're gonna do here is use a wireframe from the design library. So let's go to, let me make sure I'm clicked out of everything. Go to the design library, go to wireframe, and join the mailing list if you need to, accept the privacy policy, subscribe for access, and I'm gonna look for a good form layout. I think this first one would work perfectly. So we'll add that. Now it says this block contains unexpected or invalid content. Um, I'm just gonna, we'll convert it to HTML and then we'll delete it because I can just recreate that pretty easily. So. We'll go ahead and choose a new block here. We'll add a form, very similar to what we did before. I'm gonna remove the name, remove the, well, remove the message, and then we've got the email and the submit button. So we'll go to label styles, remove the asterisk, and then we're gonna to go to the settings for this particular field. We're gonna hide the label Add a placeholder, enter your email, and then we can configure the submit button, wherever that is. Submit styles. We'll do a full width button, and we'll change the text to subscribe. And as I mentioned before, you'd have to configure the actions after submit section to make this form actually function. But for the purposes of this site, I am gonna skip that for now. So I'm gonna edit this heading, get the tech blog newsletter. And then we can just add some promotional text here, join more than 500,000 subscribers and get the latest technology news and analysis in your inbox daily. Now the last thing we have to do is add an image here. We don't need this text. Let me see what this configuration is. So we've got a cover. I think we can actually just remove this cover and add a regular image. So I'm gonna upload an image here. And we'll go ahead and preview and see what that looks like on the site. Looks pretty good. We could definitely round off these corners a little bit. So let's actually convert this to an advanced image with cadence. And when we do that, we can go to border settings and we'll add a five pixel border radius just to slightly round off those corners. So that looks quite a bit better. And we've got one more section to add. So once again, we're gonna go into the design library. and We're gonna look for a good wireframe. So let's see, we could sort by content. This might work. Yeah, this looks good. So, 
We'll change this heading to something like industry insights from tech blog plus. We'll say get exclusive premium content from the tech industry's leading experts. And then we've got two buttons here. This is actually an advanced button block from Cadence. Uh, it has dual buttons. So you've got settings for button one and settings for button two. To keep things simple, I'm just gonna replace this with a standard button block. So we'll just call this learn more. We'll make it full width. And then we have to add an image. So we'll replace this image with this image. And the last thing I wanna double check here is that this row layout has a proper background. Uh, I think it selected this from our color palette, but I'm not sure. So I wanna go to background settings and yep, this did come from our color palette, but I actually think I wanna go with this one instead. Yeah, so we'll go with this one and let's go ahead and preview this page. Nice, it looks very good. Now the one thing I do notice is that we've got two buttons here and they don't exactly match. This one's got square corners and this one has round corners. So let's go back to the form block. We'll go to the submit styles and we'll add a border radius. So once we've done that, the buttons should match perfectly. So we've got our large hero section here. We've got our post section. We've got a newsletter subscription section, and we've got this section prompting people to sign up for our exclusive content offer. So now we've got our homepage in the bag.